All right, and we're back with concept 2.1, investigate rational numbers. Rational numbers. In mathematics, a rational number is a number that can be expressed as the quotient or fraction p over q of two integers, a numerator p and a non-zero denominator q. So we'll start. Which of these are rational numbers? 6.14, the square root of 2, negative 9 over 17, 0 0.09 continuous, and 1 over 0. So first, we look at 6.14. 6.14 can be shown as a fraction with 614 over 100. The square root of 2 is 1.414213562327. It goes on and on. 0 0.09 continuous can be written as a fraction as 1 over 11. So, first of all, we can look at the fraction 614 over 100. That is a rational number. It is as a fraction, so it must be rational. The square root of 2, as we saw, is, is a continuous decimal point, so it is irrational. Negative 9 over 17 is also rational. It's already in a fraction. It has a negative number, but that does not prevent it from being a rational number. So it is a rational number. Then 0 0.09 continuous is 1 over 11, so that becomes rational as well because it can be written as a fraction and we finally go to one over zero well this fraction is actually undefined because we're dividing by zero now if we remember the rules of mathematics when we divide by zero that means it's a number on top of zero and if we written, write this down with a letter n over zero this can also help you to remember it that's a no do not divide by zero because that is undefined now in the case that we have zero divided by something else then we have zero on top over a number and we'll write this number as k and that again can help you remember that a number um, in the bottom would be okay so divide by zero that's a no zero divided by something else that's okay now we move on fractions that are equivalent to four so four can be written as a fraction as four over one now four over one has equivalent fractions and we can simply basically multiply four times two which equals eight one times two equals two four over one is the same as saying 8 over 2. And we can continue with this trend in saying 16 over 4, 20 over 5, and 12 over 3. All of these are equivalent fractions. A way of checking this is 4 divided by 1 equals 4. 1 times 4 equals 4. 8 divided by 2 equals 4. 2 times 4 equals 8. 12 divided by 3 equals 4. 3 times 4 equals 12. 16 divided by 4 equals 4. 4 times 4 equals 16. Finally, 12, 20 divided by 5 equals 4. 5 times 4 equals 20. All of these are equivalent fractions. Now, fractions are also division problems. So, as you can tell, all the division problems equals 4. All of these are 4 and they can be written as fraction in several ways. Now we look at using long division to convert 11 over 27 to a decimal. Now 11 over 27 is 27 divided by 11. So we remember how we do long division in this way. We know that 27 
is on the outside, 11 is on the inside. 27 does not fit into the first unit, which is 1. So we put 0 on top. 0 times 27 is 0. So 1 minus 0 equals 1. Now we bring down the other one, and that would be 1. So now we can do 27 fit into 11. And again, that does not fit, so it's 0. 0 times 27, again, is 0. So 11 minus 0, again, is 11. So with this trend, now we have to add a 0. But because we're adding to the 11, first we have to put a decimal. And if we put the decimal on the bottom, we have to put a decimal on the top of our long division problem. Now we can simply bring down that 0, and now we have 110. So how many times can 27 go into 110? That would be 4 times. 4 times 27 is 108. So 110 minus 108 would be correct, 2. So uh, we have to repeat now. We have to add another 0 and bring it down. And now it's 20. Because, again, 20 is smaller than 27. We can simply add another 0 so that we can then see how many times 27 fits in 200. So 27 into 200 would be 7. Because we added two zeros, we have to remember to include that other digit, which would be 0, 7, so that we can complete this long division. So 7 times 27 equals 189. 200 minus 189 is 11. Now, we have found that we started with 11 and we have a remainder 11. What does this mean? Well, this simply means that we've reached our answer, 0 0.407, and this is continuous. If we continue long division, we will continue receiving these digits. We will have 407, and then it's going to repeat 407 or 407 over and over and over again. We'll have another example. Using long division, convert to a decimal. Using long division, we'll convert 5 over 33 to a decimal, which is 5 divided by 33, which equals, <clears throat> first of all, we have to put our numbers, 33 on the outside, 5 on the inside. And again, we know that we can't fit 35 into 5, so we need to add a 0. Because we're adding that 0, we need to add a decimal after the 5, and we need to add it at the top as well. So, 33 into 50 is 1, 1 times 33. So now we do 50 minus 33, which equals 17. Now we have to add another 0 because 17 is smaller than 33. Bring that 0 down, and we have 170. 33 into 170, that fits 5 times. 5 times 33 equals 165. 170 minus 165 equals 5. And again, we have reached a number that is repeating because we started with 5 and we have a remainder 5. We know that the answer should be 0 0.15. But again, if we continue with the long division, this 15 is going to be repeating. What it means is 0 0.15 and it will continue 1, 5, 1, 5, 1, 5, over and over again. This is a repeating decimal. Using long division, convert 1 over 2,000 to a decimal. And that's 1 divided by 2,000. So again, we remember that 2,000 is on the outside, 1 is on the inside. We know that 2,000 does not fit into 1, so we have to add a couple of zeros. We would have to add four zeros to make that 10,000. Remember that we add a decimal. We add the decimal to the top. And how many times can 2,000 fit into 10,000? And that would be 5. 
remembering that we need to add those units that we added in the bottom. So we added four zeros so that we need to add four units at the top. So that will be zero, 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 five. Five times 2,000 would be 10,000. So 10,000 minus 10,000 equals zero. Now that we reach zero, we know we've reached our answer. So the answer is 0 0.005. And because it's in zero, it ended in zero, we know this is a terminating decimal. There is nothing after that. It's 0 0.005 exactly. And again, we use long divisions to convert 111 over 125 to a decimal. So we remember that we have to put 125 on the outside, 111 on the inside. And we just need to ignore that 1 divided by 2,000 because that's a little mistake that I made and forgot to remove that 2,000. <clears throat> so again, 125 does not fit into 111, so we need to add a 0. And we remember that we need to add a decimal as well. So we add the decimal at the top. And now we try to fit in 125 into 1,110. That would be 8. 8 times. 8 times 125 equals 1,000. So 1,110 minus 1,000 equals simply 110. Now we have to add a 0, bring it down, and repeat. So now we have 1,100. How many times is 125 fit into 1,100, that would be 8 times again. So 8 times 125 equals, again, we know it's 1,000, so 1,100 minus 1,000 equals 100. And we have to add, a, once again, a 0. We bring that down, and now we have 1,000. How many times can 125 fit into 1,000? Well, again, we know it's 8. 8 times 125 equals 1,000. 1,000 minus 1,000 equals correct a zero and again we've reached that special number zero we know it's a terminating decimal so the answer and remember one divided by two thousand is wrong we were doing 111 over 125 so excuse my mistake but our correct answer to this fraction would be 0 0.888 as a terminating decimal exactly 0.888 And we're going to continue using long division. Now we're going to convert 0 over 2 to a decimal, which is 0 divided by 2. We can do this again. 2 on the outside, 0 on the inside. We can't do 2 on... Uh, 2 can't fit into 0, so we, we're going to do the same thing as always. We're going to add another 0, and we're going to add that decimal. So how many times can 2 fit into 0 again? So again, we just know it's 0. But we will continue using the long division. 0 times 2 is 0. So 0 minus 0 is 0. And again, we know this is a 0. We finished this uh, fraction or division problem. And we reach 0. It's a terminating decimal. It's just 0. Remember that when we divide 0 over a number, that's OK. But we also know that any time we have 0 on top of a fraction, it will always equal 0. And also, that would be just a terminating decimal because it's just 0, 0.0. We'll continue using long division. Now we'll convert 4 over 9 to a decimal. That's 4 divided by 9. So we have 9 on the outside, 4 on the inside. We remember. 4 is a smaller number, we need to add a 0 and a decimal, so we add that decimal at the top as well. 9 into 40 would be 4 times. 4 times 9 is 36. 40 minus 36 equals 4. So, again, we've reached two numbers that we started with, with the number 4, and we have a remainder 4. What does this mean is that we reached our answer, which is 0 0.4, but we have to remember that this is continuous as well. This is a repeating decimal. The answer is 0 0.4444 and so on. 
Now, we'll look at this example. What is the value of integer 9 when 6 over n minus 2 is not a rational number? Now, this might seem like a difficult question, but we only have to think a little bit. If we remember from the beginning with these fractions, how do we make this example not a rational number? Did you remember? Well, if we remembered from those first slides, divide by zero. Remember, if we have a number over zero, we should not do it. So that's not a rational number. So we can easily, if we don't want a rational number, we can make this expression 6 over n minus 2 a 6 over 0. How do we do that? 2. 2 minus 2. So n equals 2. If we put 2 where n is, it, is at, we have 6 over 2 minus 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. 6 over 0, we cannot divide by 0. That's undefined. And this makes this expression not a rational number. It's a little bit tricky, but we just have to remember our rules. Now, which fractions are equivalent to 0 0.7 continuous? So, if we know some of our fractions, we would know, for example, that 7 over 9 is equal to 0 0.7 continuous. Now, we remember that equivalent fractions exist, so 7 over 9 is the same as saying 14 over 18, because this is simply multiplying by 2. We multiply 7 times 2, that's 14, and 9 times 2, which is 18. And that's equivalent. And if we continue doing this, 7 times 3 is 21, 9 times 3 is 27, so that's also equivalent. And we can continue doing this all the way up to 4 or any number we like. So 7 times 4 is 28, 9 times 4 is 36. All of these fractions are equivalent to 0 0.7 continuous. And we go on to an example <clears throat> that's a little bit tricky. Write the decimal equivalent of a fraction that falls between 4 over 7 and 5 over 7 on the number line. So, we have 4 over 7, and we have 5 over 7. In the middle, in a number line, we would have 4.5 over 7. But, of course, we don't want a decimal on the top of a fraction. We want a whole number. So, how would we do this? Well, again, we remember equivalent fractions. We can simply multiply by 2 and have an equivalent fraction. So, 4 times 2 equals 8, 7 times 2 equals 14. Our equivalent fraction of 4 over 7 is 8 over 14. If we simply do this with the other fraction, 5 times 2 is 10, and 7 times 2 is 14, now we have another equivalent fraction. Now our denominators are exactly the same, so now we can easily fit in the number in the middle. And in this case, the number in the middle would be 9 over 14. So that is the exact number that fits in between 4 and over 7 and 5 over 7. The exact number in between is 9 over 14. And if we do the long division, we find that the decimal form of 9 over 14 is 9.64 on and on. So... For the next problem, we match each fraction to its decimal equivalent. I'm missing a T at equivalent, so please add it in your notes. So it's 2 thirds, 6 over 1, 66 over 10, and 66 over 100. Now, 2 over 3 is 0 0.6 continuous, so 0 0.666 on and on. 6 over 1, when we divide by 1, is just the number on top, which is just a 6. Another way of expressing 6 is 6.0. 6 
66 divided by 10 or 66 over 10, we move the decimal once. So in 66, we don't have a decimal, but we know that 66 is also 66.0. We move the decimal once to the left. So 66 becomes 6.6. .6. And similarly, 66 over 100, now we move the decimal twice. So that becomes 0 0.66. And we move on to using long division again to convert 5 over 8 to a decimal. That's 5 divided by 8. So we put 8 on the outside, 5 on the inside, and we start. And again, 5 is smaller than 8, so we have to add a 0. We have to remember that we're adding a decimal to that 0 as well. So we add it to the top. And 8 into 50, that would be 6 times. 6 times 8 equals 48. 50 minus 48 equals 2. And we have to add a zero, we bring it down, and we repeat. 8 into 20, that would be 2. 2 times 8 is 16. 20 minus 16 is 4. We again have to add a zero, bring it down, that would be a zero. 8 into 40, that would be 5. 5 times 8 is 40. 40 minus 40 is 0. And again, we caught that zero. That would equal 0 0.625. And we remember, that means it's a terminating decimal. It ends right there. The answer is 0 0.625 exactly. Using long division, now we convert 7 over 5 to a decimal, which is 7 divided by 5. We put 5 on the outside, 7 on the inside. In this case, 5 does fit in 7 once. Now we remember that we can add a decimal because if we need to add zeros, we need to add the decimal on top. So first we just do 1 times 5, that would be 5. 7 minus 5 equals 2. And again, we know there was a remainder, we had to add a zero, we already did the decimal on top, we bring down that zero, and now we have 20. 5 into 20 is 4. So now we have 1.4. 4 times 5 is 20. 20 minus 20 equals 0. And remember, we reached that 0. We have our answer, 1.4. And finally, we know this is a terminating decimal, 1.4 exactly. We have another example. Using long division, we convert 10 over 15 to a decimal. 10 divided by 15. Now, if we know fractions, we can also derive that 10 over 15 equals 2 over 3. How do we know that? The same way that we know equivalent fractions. Because this is a, a bigger number, we can simply divide by 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2. 15 divided by 5 is 3. That is 2 thirds. And if we know 2 thirds as a decimal, we know it's 0 0.6 continuous. We've already done that um, division. And because 0 0.6 is continuous, we know this is a repeating decimal. It repeats 0 0.6, 6, 6, 6, 6, on and on. We have another example. Using long division, we convert 11 over 7 to a decimal. 11 divided by 7. So we put 7 on the outside, 11 on the inside. 7 does fit into 11 one time. So that's 1 times 7, 11 minus 7, which equals 4. Now we have to add a 0, remembering that we have to add that decimal and add the decimal at the top. We bring down that 0, and that would be 40. 7 into 40 fits 5 times. 5 times 7 is 35. 40 minus 35 equals 5. And again, we add that 0, we bring it down, and now we have 50. How many times can 7 fit into 50? That would be 7 times. 7 times 7 equals 49. 5 minus 49 equals 1. So we do it again. 0, we add a 0, we bring it down, and now we have 10. How many times can 7 fit into 10? That would be 1. 1 times 7 is 10. 10 minus 7 is 3. 
10 minus 7 equals 3. So, again, we have to add a 0. We bring that down, and we have 30. 7 to 30, we can fit that 4 times, so 4 times 7 equals 28. 30 minus 28, that would equal 2. So now we have 2. And what do we have to do? Add another 0. We bring that down, and now we have 20. How many times can 7 fit into 20? Well, in this case, it's now 2. 2 times 7 equals 14. 20 minus 14 is 6. So what do we have to do next? Add another 0. We bring that 0 down, and now we have 60. 7 into 60. This is why learning our multiplication table is good, because this way we know that 7 can fit into 60 8 times. 8 times 7 is 56. 60 minus 56 equals 4. So, now we've noticed something. Now we finally reach a number that we already had at the beginning. We had 4 at the beginning and we had 4 in this remainder. What do we know about this is that we reached our answer. Our answer is 1.571428 repeating. Remember, this is a repeating decimal. And this means that 11 over 7, or 11 divided by 7, is 1.571428, and that number will start repeating. So it's 1.571428, again, 571428, and again, it will keep, keep repeating forever. We have another example of using long division. We convert 22 over 18 to a decimal. That would be 22 divided by 18. So we have 18 on the outside, 22 on the inside. 18 does fit into 22 once. We just add that decimal. 1 times 18 is 18. 22 minus 18 equals 4. And remember that we have to add that 0. We bring that down. Now it's 40. How many times can 18 go into 40? And of course, that's 2. 2 times 18 equals 36. 40 minus 36 equals 4. And we again have reached a repeating decimal because we already know that we had a remainder 4 and we have a remainder 4. This number will be repeating. So we reached the answer. 1.22 is repeating. 1.22222 forever. And that's a repeating decimal. So... Now that we've done all these examples, we have to complete the table below so that each row shows equivalent representations. So, on the first column, we have fractions. 5 over 8, 7 over 11, and 3 over 5. We have to show the decimal form and then the percent. So, only the last column is something new. For 5 over 8, if we do the long division, we know that would be 0 0.625. For 7 and 11, we do long division, and that gives us 0 0.63 repeating. We do long division of 3 over 5, and that would be 0 0.6. Now, we have to do the percent. The way we look at the percent is we move the decimal, or we just multiply. So, the easy way is that if we have 0 0.625, we move the decimal 2 times to the right. So if we move the decimal from 0 0.625 twice to the right, that would be 62.5. And that becomes the percent, 62.5%. We go on to 7 over 11, which is 0 0.63 continuous, and we move that to the right. That would be 63.63%. We remember that because it's a repeating decimal, 63 is repeating. So if we move the decimal to the right twice, we have 63, but 63 is continuous. We have to add another 63 because of that continuous uh, decimal. So that's 63.63%. And finally, we've reached 0.6. So 0.6, we move the decimal to the right twice. We remember that we have to add a zero, so we move the decimal to the right from 0.6. That would be 60. 
60%. A helpful example would be if we have 0 0.01, that equals 1%. If we have 0 0.1, that is 10%. And 1.0, or just simply 1, that is 100%. To have equivalent percents, we just multiply by 100 and we get our percent from a decimal. And if we don't remember that, we can simply move the decimal twice to the right, and we also get the percent. Finally, we have a word problem. The members of the science club are researching winter weather across the nation and they write the following statement to represent the four lowest temperatures in degrees Celsius. Negative 12.7 is less than negative 12.9, which is less than negative 8.34, which is less than negative 8.38. Nora tells the other members that the inequality statement is not true. The best explanation for the mathematical reason that she is correct is as follows. The opposite of a negative rational number tells its distance from zero on the number line. Of the set of values, negative 12.9 has the greatest opposite value, so it is the farthest to the left of zero, and is therefore the temperature with the least value. So, as we can tell, the members of the science club actually wrote this inequality wrong because the first number to the left should have been negative 12.9. And that will conclude our concept 2.1, Investigate Rational Numbers. Bye-bye. Self-destruct in 10. Please push the red button. Yeah, the eight, red button. Just... Seven, Push it. Six, yeah, the red five, button. Push the red button. Four, okay. Three, Come on. The red two, button. Push it. <gasps> you're gonna let it self-destruct? If you subscribe, you're forgiven for trying to destroy the world.